Today I want to show you a way to visualize how a polar graph is drawn. Hopefully then I can give you a richer and more intuitive understanding what polar graphs actually mean. So let us try and imagine building a machine that draws these polar roses. First we need to find a mechanism that gives us a sine function. Let's start with a circle, mark a point on it, and spin it around. If we measure how far in one direction this point is, then that gives us the sine function. Here is a mechanism that turns this spinning circle into the smooth back and forth of a sine function. Now let's put another circle over here and have it drive the rotation of the left circle with a drive chain. Finally, let's put a drawing device on this end of the mechanism and see what it draws. So now we have our device that can graph sine and cosine functions in polar mode. The formula illustrates how we independently control the angle of the right circle which spins the left circle and moves the stylus back and forth. Each input angle has one output stylus location. If we want to make things more interesting, we can change the ratio between these two circles. We can do this with gear cassettes under these circles, just like the gears on a bicycle. When we shift gears, we change the ratio. We express this ratio in the formula as the coefficient to theta. What this means is that we now go through two spins of the left circle and two cycles of the cosine function for every one time around the right circle. And so we can see that a polar rose is really just an elegant representation of the relationship between two cyclic motions, like polyrhythms that overlap at regular intervals. Now that we have built our machine and understand how it works, let's change the ratios and see what we can do. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.